Yes, yes, yes. We are back again for episode two of the Future of Football, the podcast from Verses that brings you closer to the people, the stories and the ideas that are shaping the future of the game we love. Joined once again by myself, Corey, and my colleague, Mayoa. What's happening, mate? How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, man. No, no stress here. No stress here. Like episode one was like a month ago now or so, I think. Which seems Something. like a while ago, a bit of a Christmas break, but yeah, back in the thick of it, back in the thick of it. Exactly. I'm back with a um, really important discussion as well. I think a very timely one, especially when we look at what last year was. I think this is one that people are really going to be interested in. I'll let you um, yes. lead the way, explain where it is. So episode one, I think we started off in, in Quiet Really. We kind of made our lane a little bit with episode one and kind of showed the people what we want to try and get into every episode. Um, with a long discussion about the you know race bias in sports media with the help of Marvin Sordell I think this time out again it's another step in the right direction and boy do we have a guest to, to round this discussion off man like two episodes in to have this guy on is a bit of a big privilege um, but yeah today we are talking about whether athletes and football players specifically can change the world now this comes on obviously after a fairly big 2020 and significant for many many athletes where we saw Marcus Rashford uh, you know you turned the UK government twice in an amazing show of strength for what athletes and football players can represent. We saw Wilfred Zaha house NHS workers during the pandemic. We saw Jude Bellingham literally this week build a school for kids in Kenya, which is an amazing show of strength and positivity from someone who's so young. And I think what 2020 did for all of us was demonstrate just how much athletes can use their power to really change the world. And for us, that's a trend that we haven't really seen previously. And yeah, this week, this episode, we got a man who knows all too well about taking leadership on and off the pitch. We are talking to the one and only Jordan Henderson, man, Liverpool captain, Premier League winner, and perhaps more importantly of all, the guy who really drove home this idea of um, the Players Together Fund to raise money for the NHS workers during the pandemic. So yeah, so Mayo, I like throw this question over to you before we get into it. What do you think it means to be a footballer in, in 2021? And yeah, how impressed have you been by people like Jordan who have kind of put responsibility on their shoulders and tried to yeah put on for their community? I think it means to be a role model. And I think now more than ever, footballers are really owning that identity of role model, especially now where we're in a situation where the world essentially needs football. It's a source of happiness from everything that's going on. Fans can't be close to the stadiums, and especially when you look at football teams. They are pillars of that community. So footballers have really taken on that mantelpiece of, yeah, we're going to make sure the community are strong and stay together and do the things that need to be done, not just for locally, but globally as well. I mean, you mentioned a few footballers there that have done some great stuff, but loads of the Premier League teams have really, within their local communities, players have gone out and really done some great outreach. So to have examples of people doing beyond that is even great. And today we have um, Jordan Henderson, who, like you mentioned, has been pivotal in so many different movements, has been so vocal on and off the pitch and has really just led by an example, the same way he does in the pitch, funny enough. So to have him on and to have him speak about what it means for him to be a footballer in 2021 is quite interesting, especially with how life changed for everyone last year. I mean, I don't think anyone has not been affected by the pandemic. So to hear his insight on that as well, in terms of his family life and what it means as him as a footballer right now and what it means in the future is some some great insight. How impressed like, on a personal level have you been by by Rashford, by Henderson, by Zaha, by Rhys James, by Bellingham, by Bellerin, right? By all these people who are doing amazing things on like a personal level as a football fan, first and foremost. How have you responded to seeing this change with players sort of being more vocal in how they work? Personally, I've been very impressed for so long. I've always felt that footballers have an amazing platform, right? They're adorned by young fans, older fans, worship the teams and worship the, the, the players that represent those colours. And therefore, whether they want to or not, there's this kind of like role model status that's bestowed upon them. And a lot of them recently have taken that, not as a negative. I mean, a lot of the times, some people probably feel like being in the limelight is it's too much. But all of the names you've mentioned and more have really said, you know what? I'm in a fortunate position where I can cause change. I can help my community. And you have to look no further than 
the, the Marcus Rashford's, Hector Bellerin's, especially Jordan Henderson, like we've mentioned before, this is someone who, not just by himself, spoke to other footballers and said, you know what, we can make a change here. We have a real opportunity to use our platform, to use our resources. And they've done some amazing work. And for me, that there's so much power in not just empowering yourselves, through, but empowering others around you to know that they have the ability to help. Yeah. And yeah, we they probably won't know the extent of how much they helped people through those actions. And imagine if they didn't do what they did. I mean, situation could be a lot worse. But I think that's a super important point you made. I mean, one thing we want this sort of, this podcast to be moving forward is a place where people feel comfortable sharing their stories and discussing big ideas. And I feel like the big ideas we want to discuss are massive themes that are taking the game by storm in a very real way. Like, let's be real, Marcus Rashford, it's amazing that he's received the headlines he has done for doing all this fantastic work, but he's not the only guy who's doing good things in football, right? There is an entire generation of players underneath him who are pushing their impact on society forward in a very real way and making genuine change. And Henderson is another player who's doing that in a very real way. But this is a wholesale change we're seeing in football. We've not seen this level of camaraderie between players off the pitch to make society a better place, right? We've not seen players take the knee before games. We've not seen players raise money for the NHS. We've not seen players force government U-turns. These things all happened in a 12-month time span in 2020 that in our opinion sort of sparked what we're hoping to be a sea change in how, in how footballers carry themselves off the pitch in the future. I think Rashford, Henderson, players like that have hopefully forever buried this idea that footballers should stick to football. And from this point onwards, I think what a footballer can do and what it means to be a footballer is going to be completely different to what it meant two years ago. Um, so yeah, this conversation is how footballers can change the world with Liverpool captain, Premier League winner, European winner, Jordan Henderson. So we are honoured today to be joined on the show by someone who is without doubt an absolute true modern icon of football in 2021. He's an English champion, a European champion and a world champion at club level. We are talking about none other than the Shankly Gates Catuso, <laughs> the Maka Makalele, the no drama Carlos Valderrama. It is the emperor of Anfield himself, Jordan Henderson. Welcome to the show, my man. How are you doing today? Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, good. Thank you. Sweet, sweet. Good to hear it. Good to hear it. I mean, before we sort of get into it too deep, I mean, it's just good to acknowledge that we're recording this at a time when things are tough for lots of people like, you know, yourself, ourselves included. How are you and your family sort of coping and keeping during this national lockdown we're all experiencing? Yeah, we're, we're keeping okay. You know, homeschooling's a big thing in our house at the minute. You know, trying to get the kids on the, the laptop and doing the work and um, giving them some structure to the day um oh it's tough you know it's tough for everyone especially um especially my wife you know when i'm fortunate enough i can come and train and and do do our jobs but um yeah she's stuck in the house 24 7 really with a kid so it's pretty tough yeah. um for her but it's the same for everybody you know it's tough times and um hopefully over the next few weeks or, or months the vaccine can do its job and we can all see some some light at the end of the tunnel yeah, touch wood, touch wood. I mean, look, the last year for everyone has been sort of crazy different. I mean, I think everyone's had different experiences and different memories. You yourself, how do you think you've adapted and what have you learned about yourself in this past year? I mean, you especially, although it's been difficult, you've achieved some amazing things in 2020, right? That must have required different levels of sort of resilience and, and mentality that maybe you haven't had to tap into before. Yeah, there's been different challenges for sure over the past year. Um, with everything we've had to deal with but you're right there's been some amazing moments in there as well um, so a bit of a roller coaster of a year um, and um, no but I think that's what life's all about you know challenges how you deal with stuff and and use them um, in a positive way to, to to use the experience to, to go forward and to learn from it as, as best you can and I'm sure at the minute it doesn't feel like that but I'm sure in a couple of months when we start hopefully coming at the other end of it and getting back to some normality, we can all take something from over the past year um, and live life more in a more positive way and a better way going forward. The podcast is talking about the future of football and starting conversations about how the game is changing. And of course, everyone's lives have, have changed so much. There's been 
new norm set all the time. But speaking specific about players and the game changing in 2021, in your mind, what does it mean to be a footballer right now? Well, it's always a, an honour and a privilege to, to be a footballer. You know, that's ever that's what we've dreamed of since being a kid. So to be able to do it every day and do the job that we love every day is a blessing and something that I don't take for granted. Um, so I know I'm in a, in a very privileged position. I also know that comes with responsibility and a lot of people look up to us as footballers, especially young children. And it's up to us to, to sort of inspire them and lead them in the right direction going forward, giving them positivity in times when needed. And I think over the past year, um, yeah, a lot of that has been needed, especially off the, pit, off the pitch, um, to try to keep everybody positive with what's been going on, to try to support different people, support the NHS and what they're doing um, for, for all of us. So, um, yeah, there's, there's been, it's been a, a difficult year for, for, for everyone, whether they've been involved in the, in the pa pandemic directly or indirectly. I think it's affected everyone and, um, and us as footballers have, have, have had the privilege to carry on for large periods of that, playing football, doing what we love still um, and getting that freedom. So for us, it's about trying to put a smile on people's faces, even for that 90 minutes or whatever it is on the weekend, where they can have something to look forward to, especially in lockdown. Um, to watch the games um, and, yeah, try and try and do the best we can. What really stands out to me personally is um, you mentioned responsibility and what I have seen and probably the whole nation, the whole world has seen is this feeling of embrace responsibility. It's people like yourself, Rashford, Rhys James, Troy Deeney, Zaha. There's so many footballers, especially in this generation now, that are really embracing that sense of social responsibility. Why do you think that so many people are now motivated to give back? Well, I think over the past what was it, 10, 11 months in the pandemic, we would see that people were in need when a crisis, the whole nation, the whole world, really. Um, and I know a lot of people love football, love sport, and do look up to us. So I think it's down to us uh, in a certain aspect to, to sort of lead by example and help whenever we can. You know, I think it's the least we can do. Um, and if we feel passionate about something and we want to change something and, and, and support people that need it, I think it's only a good thing that people feel free to be able to do that. Do that. Yeah, I think what's interesting for us talking to you about this specifically is that, I mean, you're still only 30 years old. You have another six, seven, eight years left in your career. Who knows? But it feels like already you've been through quite a lot of different types of changing rooms, whether it was Sunderland coming through to your loan spell at Coventry to Liverpool being right at the top of the elite level game. I think you've been around lots of different sort of professionals, backgrounds, people at all different stages of their careers. But in this moment in time, does sort of the idea of players giving back feel like a new thing that maybe wasn't as prevalent in previous changing rooms you've been in? Because that's how it seems to feel from an outside audience perspective. But yeah, what's your take on that? I think over the past, I think you'd still find a lot of players doing a lot of stuff for charity or something that they're passionate about outside of football. Whether or not you heard about it or not is, is a different thing. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that has been heightened over the past 10, 11 months because of the situation that the whole country's in and, and the whole world's in. And we've, we've needed people to try to um, come together um, people like Marcus has done an amazing job and something that he's passionate about and that needs to be done you mentioned Troy um, Reese and, and Wilf, Wilf as well so there's so many people doing amazing things and supporting um, people that, that need it the most especially with, with this pandemic um, and what's been going on over the past 10-11 months Definitely I mean in your specific case right what everyone has sort of kind of Russ to applaud you for and rightly so over the last year was your role in the Players Together movement which obviously raised fund for NHS workers etc um, with that case number one I mean how did that happen and sort of what was your main spark and motivation for thinking yeah I we need to do more like, and how did that discussion go with all the players from all the clubs um, yeah I mean it was it took a while because of the amount of people that were involved but all the captains across the Premier League were amazing, you know, and, and the work that they had done. 
and and not only the captains, you know, the players throughout the leagues, um, the the English national team, the lionesses, um, getting involved as well. So there were so many people that 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 helped. Um, and like I said, it's the biggest crisis the NHS have, have ever had. So we felt a responsibility that, that we could do something to help, not only raising large amounts of money donation-wise, but but also that support um, mechanism um, that they would feel from doing that was was huge as well. And the impact that that had on them um, was, was really big uh, mentally for them because what they've been going through is, has been tough over the last year and it'll probably get a lot tougher again over the next few months. So for us to support them, I think, means an awful lot to them. Um, a lot of them, I'm sure, will be football fans and support different teams all over the country. So for them, players, uh, they look up to to actually have the, the roles reversed and for us to, to be looking up to them and thanking them for what they're doing, I think, had a big impact on them. Despite being such big role models, all footballers are human beings as well. How important has your support system been throughout the last 12 months in relation to everything that you've been doing? Yeah, very important. I mean, in, with success, I think you need good people around you. You know, it doesn't just happen. You've got to have a good support mechanism, whether that's in football, family, friends, outside, whatever you do. I think using people um, to help you um, in, in a positive way is, is really important, especially mentally. You know, if you're suffering um, and you're alone in the house and locked down and you feel depressed, I think reaching out to people, speaking to people can only help that. Um, so, yeah, I've been fortunate enough, not only over the past year, but my whole life to have amazing people around us, family, friends, teammates, which whatever club I've been at, um, and especially now, um, the teammates and, and the coaching staff and everybody involved in Liverpool Football Club was was incredible over the past year. So it makes it a lot easier for for myself and and for the lads. So um, so yeah, we've seen and we've discussed now about how loads of players have embraced this role as a role model, especially in these unprecedented times, and really try to help people and help communities. At the same time, we have seen this rhetoric or theme of quotation marks, footballers should stick to football. Is it dying now? And what is your perspective on that phrase that footballers should just stick to football? I think, listen, football is the most important thing to us and that's got to be our focus first and foremost, for sure. You know, that's our job. That's what we love to do. And the focus will always be on football. But at the same time, I still feel as though we've got a responsibility off the pitch where people do look up to us and we do we have got to lead by example um, and by us support and stuff that we're, that we're passionate about and that we really believe in. Um, I think it's only a good thing. I think it's only trying to help people that need help. Um, and again, especially over, over the last year, um, and you can only see what, again, we'll go back to Marcus, but the incredible job that, that he's done and, and, and is still doing. Um, and if he never spoke out, would that be getting done? And would then kids be getting the food that they're getting right now? You know, I think that's a perfect example. So I think there's many other examples that that will be going on behind the scenes and people trying to help. Um, but of course, we'll always concentrate on football. It'll not come, it'll not take anything away from that. And I'm, I'm sure Marcus is the same, you know, how good, well, um, how well he's done this season, but he's also had other things going on in the background. He's kept his focus um, and he'll be working hard as as hard as ever, really. So, um, yeah, there's no different for me. You know, f football is, is something I've done since a kid and I've dedicated my life to football my whole life and that won't change. Um, but again, I still feel some sort of responsibility to, to be able to help others. Um, around, um, especially in a crisis like we're in now. 100%. I think you mentioned like sort of how important mental strength and focus is in all of this. And that's 100% something that I think we can all agree with. I mean, I think one big test of sort of the mentality that footballers sort of have to have and endure sometimes is the idea of sort of like um, just all encompassing negativity from media, from fans, from whatever it might be. I mean, I think that the human body or the human psyche probably isn't naturally built to take 
outside voices being so critical a lot of the time yourself have you ever found yourself at the center of like a of media criticism or like bad energy from social media and, and in those moments what sort of mentality and processes do you go go through to sort of yeah almost like ignore that and shut that out and how do you come through that on the other side because it's a sort of sort of process that just most people in their regular lives don't have to go through yeah I think looking back through my career I definitely have had a period where um criticism and and things that I probably did affect us looking back when I was when I was younger when I first come to Liverpool dealing with coming to such a big club and not playing particularly well um so with that comes criticism you know whether it's fair or not it does come and uh and yeah again looking back I probably didn't cope with it too well it took us a while to get used to that um a while to deal with it properly um but once I did that and again speaking to people was a was a big part of that um which I which I've spoke about before but I think having that experience going through that can only make you stronger and um and there became a point where I'd sort of want that criticism to to keep using it in a in a more positive way for myself and and ever since then I've I've sort of liked criticism and, and probably enjoy criticism more than I do prayers, to be honest. So, um, yeah, now I sort of look for that to use um, as energy, as fuel to, to prove people wrong going forward and, and, and keep me motivated. It's quite interesting you say that you enjoy criticism more than praise. I do have some praise to give you, though, because <laughs> we did see you featuring the Anton Ferdinand documentary. Like, to be honest, I actually didn't realise beforehand that you were going to feature. And it was only when you came in and I saw the store in Ireland, I was like, oh, that's Jordan. But <laughs> I spoke so well in it. But for you, especially with everything else you've done this year and you've been a big impact in, how... How does it feel to see loads of football players come together en masse and really challenge racism in, in the game? Amazing. And I know that that's another positive I, I look back to in, 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 in the first lockdown. Not only did we raise a, a large and a lot of money for, for the NHS, uh, NHS and, and the staff and the volunteers who needed it and, um, and the support, but we also um, wanted to make change with, with racism. Um, and what was going on in the world at that moment in time. Um, and I felt we all come together. We all wanted to do something to try to make change um, with that. And we've stuck with it. And um, we're trying our best to, to make change, you know, not only taking the knee, but speaking publicly about it. Um, and and also the... Um, the what was I going to say about that? Yes, the, the, the diversity code... Um, which which I've spoke to with the FA, um, who who put a diversity call. I'm not sure whether you've seen it, and a lot of clubs have signed up to it um, within the Premier League and other leagues as well, which I think is, again, starting to make change um, because it's all good, you know, doing a, a campaign and maybe putting a, a kick it out racism T-shirt on for one game a season, but actually doing something about it, making change is, is what is needed. Um, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of all the players coming together to, to start that movement again. Um, and, and it's nothing political. You know, we've said it from the, from the start. It's about equality, really. That, that's, all it, that's all it's about. It's about everybody having the same opportunity, no matter what colour, religion, gender you are. Um, everybody should be equal and have the same opportunity. And that's what we represent in football. And that's what we stand for, especially at, at this football club. So. Um, I'm really proud to be to be a part of that. I'm really proud to be a part of the diversity code, which again is trying to change um, football for the better. Um, and hopefully, in the future, that can 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 even evolve and, and keep improving. No, it's really good to hear. I know for us, like it's always inspiring to see these changes take place in the game and see sort of our generation of players, fans whoever it might be, people in sort of governance trying to change things, hopefully over time. And I thought that's only going to increase, right? And I think as future players and future generations come through, you'll see this, this rate of change accelerate and more young players want to put their name to change in the future. So to those young players who do want to sort of follow in your footsteps and use their platforms to, to influence good in society or in the sport, what advice do you have for those young people who want to make change? Be yourself, you know, and if, if there's something you're really passionate about, uh, passionate about and you feel 
strongly about something that you can have an influence on and you can make change in a positive way. Don't be afraid to speak out. Don't be afraid to um, let your voice be heard, really, and, and try to, to make change for, for, for the better. Um, and I think, again, over the past year, that has been heightened with what we've been going through and hopefully um, people can, can see the difference that it's made for the good. And um and following in, in the footsteps and um and keep making change not only in football but in society, um and everywhere really to 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 help um drive them things that that need changing. I'm a big believer that situations teach you a lot, and we've been in a situation like we mentioned. The world has changed, but you and others have have stood up and done amazing things. And like again, once again, credit to you for everything you've done. But you've also achieved so much in the last year as well. So with all of that together, if what from what you've learned in the last year, what would you tell a younger Jordan and, and why, if you could tell a younger Jordan a lesson that you learned within the last year? Um, good question. Um, probably... Um, probably to have the confidence um, to speak about other things, um, not only football, like we're, like we're speaking about, you know, other things that that need changing in, in, in the outside world and in football, maybe speak about that earlier um, and, 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 and having the confidence to do that. Yeah, definitely. I think, like I said, we're only trying to, to make change for the better. Um, we're trying to help people that that need it, and whatever that that may be, whether that is diversity, equality, um, helping children, helping NHS, um, food banks, um, whatever that is. I think it's having the the confidence and the ability to speak out about it freely and openly, um, without worrying what 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 people think. It's amazing to you talk through all this stuff so sincerely. I think the last half hour has been a lot of us asking you to sort of introspect which is always quite difficult what might be even more difficult than that is to sort of look outside and predict the future which for our last question is going to be exactly that um so in your mind right imagine football 10 15 years from now what does the game look like how impactful is it in society and how do the role as athletes how has that changed do you think well i hope it just continues to to evolve in the right way you know i think um everything that we're speaking about hopefully just keeps evolving, keeps getting better, keeps changing for the, for the good. And um, yeah, and athletes can help drive that, can help support them systems that are put in place and, um, and keep searching for, for, for that, um, that positivity throughout everything that we spoke about again. Um, but also within the game of football, hopefully that can, keep keep the levels that it's that it's that it's that it's, that it's, that it's, that it's at really I know we speak a lot about VAR um which is a which is a big talking uh, talking point in the game um, at the moment but hopefully a year or two year or however many years time we're not really speaking about that anymore because I think everybody would agree that we're fed up with talking about it so <laughs> hopefully we get back to just playing football and enjoying the game um and going through that emotion, you know, and, and a big part of that is the fans. I, w I have to say, you know, we've missed the fans over the past year massively. I think it's shown not only in football, but in sport, how much the fans play a big part in it and the emotion of it, the passion of it. And, um, and as players, we definitely miss that. So I really look forward to them coming back and, um, and playing a big part in football again. Listen, Jordan, not only have you been an amazing leader on the field, you've been an amazing leader off it and thank you for your efforts and inspiring a generation essentially of footballer to to do similar things and and speak about things they're passionate outside of the game when they're younger thanks for your time really appreciate it hopefully we see the fans back in the stadium soon hopefully we go back to a normal state of normality and that is another episode of the future of football see you thank soon. you very much appreciate it take care Stay thanks so much yeah thank you